With this E-Class, the engine warning lamp is on. The test has found that the timing chain has lengthened. It needs to be removed. First, disconnect the battery. Then remove the cover along with the air filter housing. Now you have access to the engine. So that you can see clearer, we'll work on a removed engine. Remove the eight ignition coils and the spark plugs. Now to the removal of the cylinder head cover. First remove the air shutoff valve. Disconnect the five connectors and then remove the bracket of the engine front cover. Undo the screws of the air shutoff valve and remove. Be sure to replace the seal. Now undo the eight screws on the front cover of the right cylinder head and take it off. On the other side, unclip the crankcase breather hose and undo the four screws on the centrifuge lid. Then take it off. If the seal is damaged, replace it. Now loosen the central screw. Please note, this is a left-hand thread. Now the centrifuge can come out. Check the position of the camshaft. To do this, turn the engine crankshaft in the direction of engine rotation to 40 degrees after the TDC. In addition, the marks must be aligned with the bearing surfaces of the cylinder head cover. Then lock the gear backlash play compensation of the exhaust camshaft. Lock the backlash by putting a 3mm pin into the hole of the cover. Get a colleague to help you to disconnect the central valves. He should hold the camshaft using this special Torx attachment. Rotate the left valve to the left and the right to the right. The engine control unit is next. Don't disconnect the left plug, but the right one instead. Remove the right-hand control unit bracket. Then remove the ground cable from the cylinder head cover. Next, undo the five screws on the cable channel. Set this aside. The 22 screws on the cover must be removed according to the tightening procedure. Undo them in the reverse order to the tightening procedure. Once the screws are out, remove the cylinder head cover by prying it out gently with a suitable tool. Now take out the exhaust camshaft. To do this, first undo the central valve and remove the pulse wheel. Check to see if the dowel or pin is sheared off. Make sure to replace the pulse wheel for a new one. Then hold one end of the exhaust camshaft with a Torx wrench and loosen the camshaft adjuster at the front. Remove the auxiliary bearing cap and then take out the exhaust camshaft.
The chain adjuster is next. With its removal, the pressure bolt is pushed into its final position, so be sure to replace it with a new one. Now take out the tensioning rail bolts from the engine. Use an impact extractor. Put on gloves to remove the tensioning rail, otherwise there's a risk of injury. Now remove the intake camshaft. Do this just like the exhaust camshaft. At the last step, don't forget to secure the chain from falling. Done. Now you have access to the timing chain. Cover the chain shaft so that nothing can fall into the engine. For the removal of the timing chain, you need to get a colleague and new tools. The chain separating tool, with the pressure screw, and the pressure pins. And the rivet press tool. This includes the assembly and installation kits 1 and 2 plus the chain link. While your colleague holds the chain, put the chain separating tool on the chain. Turn the handle until no more resistance is felt and the chain pin is pushed out. Now the chain is separated. Always pay attention that nothing falls into the engine shaft. Now connect the new timing chain to the old one. While your colleague continues to hold the chain, install a link in the chain and put on the safety. Slowly turn the engine in the direction of engine rotation. This pulls the new timing chain through. Turn the crankshaft until the joint is visible and you can disconnect the joint. Pull the end of the old chain out gently. Remove the assembly link. It only served as a mounting aid. Now it gets tricky. Rivet the ends of the new chain together. For this you need the rivet press tool. Install mounting kit 1. Insert the centering fork retaining plate and rivet link into the ends of the timing chain. Then turn the handle. This way you press the rivet link into the retaining plate. Make sure that when the centering fork is pushed out, it doesn't fall into the engine shaft. Next, the outer retaining plate is pressed onto the rivet link. For this, install the press rivet assembly kit too. Put on the tool. The magnet holds the outer retaining plate in place. There are spaces in the timing chain. The link and the outer retaining plate align. Then turn the handle until firm resistance is felt. Now for the final riveting step. Turn the mounting assembly over so the magnet is facing upwards. 
Now turn the pressure handle again. The reference value is 32 Newton meters. Done. The timing chain is connected. Secure it from falling. Now start with the reinstallation. Spray sealant remover on the residue of the cylinder head. Let the spray react for 5 to 10 minutes. Then remove the residue with a plastic wedge. Do the same on the front cover and the cylinder head cover. Before reinstalling, check if the camshaft on the other side has shifted. To do this, remove the camshaft hall sensor. Renew the hall sensor seal. Together with your colleague, turn the engine crankshaft in the direction of engine rotation to 55 degrees before the TDC. This corresponds to the 305 degree mark on the belt pulley. This must line up with the marker assistance on the timing cover. In addition, check for the marks on the pulse wheels. They must appear centered in the holes. Now install the camshaft again. Tighten the screws with 8 Newton meters. The camshaft adjuster is next. Put it into the basic position. Pay attention to the marks again. Insert the new oiled pulse wheel. Then put the tensioning rail back. Apply some sealing compound to the thread side of the clamping bolt and mount it again with the impact extractor. You need the sealing compound and the gun for the cylinder head cover and the front lid. Now install the chain adjuster and tighten it with 70 Newton meters. Then install the exhaust camshaft. Apply the sealant along the contact surfaces of the cover. Pay attention to the correct sealant path as described in this. The rest of the installation is done in the reverse order. Finally, verify the position of the camshaft. Are the markings on the pulse wheel visible in the holes? And does it line up with the 305 degree marking? Then everything is correct. After you've done a short test in star diagnosis and erased the error memory, the vehicle is ready for use.